That was a moderate five minutes of our language. Check and go as well to meetings and council. Namaste and welcome to day 12 of the quarantine transformation in 21 days. I'm sure you would, your body would have rested well after it. 50 sodas and star on day 1 and good stretches and hot foot bath on day 11. If you haven't gone or if you haven't practiced hot foot bath, do so in the my blog on the hot foot bath which has all the details about this nourish of the Timing, we are playing around with timing. So today, 9 count inhalation, 18 count exhalation. Make your own choice, no strain at all. Get your spine tall. Watch your breath and we start now. That was two minutes Nare Shodhan Kriya or alternate nostril breathing process of cleansing your Nare the imaginary channel. Uh, I'm sure you're doing well. Keep increasing your timing and the most important thing, make just make a note of yourself. We are going to start with Surya Namaskar, the plan for Surya Namaskar. It's divided into three parts. So we are performing 12 Surya Namaskar in the now, 12 in the middle and 12 towards the end of the program. Uh, this 12 Surya Namaskar, like we are going to speed up, we are used to that. You have to make a call, what is your comfort zone? So you can choose from the count which is given on my YouTube. You can go with 24 seconds uh, uh, count, uh, one Surya Namaskar for 24 seconds. You can go for 18 seconds, for 15 seconds, 12 seconds. Your choice. But make sure you definitely do 12 Surya Namaskar in the first round. Those who are just new to Surya Namaskar go very slow, but you too have to do 11 Surya Namaskar. Now the second round is also 12 Surya Namaskar. Those who are comfortable go with that. If you have chosen uh, say 18 seconds in the first one, you can go with the 24 seconds count in the second one. And you know simultaneously in the third one. Those who are new to Surya Namaskar, you are doing 11 Surya Namaskar for sure. Take a break and do. Next uh, round of Surya Namaskar, you will do only 6 Surya Namaskar. Next to that, only 3. But do that. Go slow as much as possible, but do that. We are speeding up. Don't try to match up with our speed if you are not used to. You will get hurt. Another thing which is very important after Surya Namaskar, to check that you are good. You should be able to talk. There can be uh, <coughs> some gasping of breath, but not too much. So that's an important uh, uh, way of understanding that you are not doing too much uh, into that. So we are starting with Surya Namaskar now. One, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four, one, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eleven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. A quick look at how the after surgery and discuss so that you can come back to your normal day. Soft squat position, lean forward, inhale from the nasal pass and exit from the mouth. By creating a cushion. Back with our first round of Surya Namaskar. Take a break if you want to. You can go with Shavasan. You can sip some water. And once you are ready to go again, we are starting with few standing postures. As you will see, that we are now increasing the speed uh, of the practice in terms of strength and stamina. You as per your comfort, but slightly beyond your comfort zone. So we are moving with Pasha Konasan, and we start. We are going to start again with the same one. Legs apart, approximately four and a half feet. Hold it. Left foot 90 degree to the left, right foot slightly to the left. Check for the engagement of your spine. Your hips are in line. Slide your ankles faster to face the floor. Hands on the waist. Rotate your left knee to place it above your left ankle. And now drop your hips slightly down without collapsing your body. Your left forearm is on the left knee. Rotate out. Hold it. Now don't allow your right thigh to collapse out. Be there. We are going to be here for approximately 30 seconds. If it is too much, go with 30 seconds. But make sure at any cost you don't stay your knee. Look at the opposite side. Keep your knees safe, the one which is bending, as well as, as well as the one extending. Focus on the outrage of your extended foot, press it down, so that you can lift your 
but this is slightly up. Hold fill the groin. Breathe. Keep breathing. You can go with deep breathing if you are comfortable. If you are aware of Ujjayi, go ahead with Ujjayi. And release slowly. This was the process of getting into Uthita Pash of Konasi. We are actually going to do Uthita Pash of Konasi. And as you can see, I got the brick. If you don't have brick, it's absolutely fine. You can just assume the posture we did just now. If you have anything in which you can take some high, maybe some box, some dabba at home, you can use that as well. Otherwise, these bricks are very easily available. So we are starting with the brick because if you go left leg, bring the brick close to the left ankle and keep it in vertical position. We are progressing to just, you know, उस मैट को भी थोड़ा सा इधर कर लो थोड़ा सा थोड़ा सा रोटेट कर लो बस पैरेलल हो जाएगा हाँ ठीक है ओके सो वी आर वी आर टेक द ब्रिक इन वर्टिकल पोजीशन सो दैट वी कैन स्लोली मूव टुवर्स द पोस्टर विदाउट स्ट्रेनिंग योरसेल्फ गेट रेडी फॉर द पोस्टर सेम पोजीशन चेक योर नी दिस इज अ बेस And now what you are doing, you are placing the palm on the brake. Press as much as possible. When I am placing my left palm on the brake, I am working with the left one, pushing it up and rotating out. This is very, I am just doing very simply, uh, you have to be in your comfort zone. Hold. Right arm goes up, tall, as tall as possible. I am kind of pushing my right hip out and lifting it up to the ceiling for a bit of break. Tall, lengthen, start the lengthening from the edge. The outer side of the right foot, mentally start lengthening, lengthening, arm goes up completely. Watch your breath. Step one, you will calm down with the breath. Look at the armpit and start moving to the fingers. Now, if you look at my left arm, it's become loose, so I'll have to push it up. This is the movement. This. Feel the opening. The stretch. This should be ideally comfortable. But still, you get a lot of benefit of strength building posture. If you are comfortable over here, what we will do, we will put the brick in sleeping position. In this position, reducing the height. See, this way. Tall, up. Hold. Start with 10 seconds or 20, but be in your comfort zone. Come back. Look down, release, and relax very slowly. We will repeat in the other side, change your position, bring the break at the outer side of the right ankle now. Rotate, knee above your ankle, hold on to that. You can see I have already started sweating. Just with the Surya Namaskar and the standing posture. All of those who have been asking about weight loss, fat loss, these are amazing practices. And that weight loss and fat loss is a byproduct. You have no idea unless until you really do it what kind of internal cleansing you are doing and how strong you are making your immune system. So moving into the posture, this way, hold it, tall, hold the brick, hold the brick, rotate, up, tall, you are trying to reach out to the ceiling and above your head, hold it, keep rotating out. You will hold for equal length of time as we have done in the, uh, the, on the other side. Right shoulder is pushed up, not collapsing. If you are still comfortable, bring, reduce, reduce the height of the bit and then go ahead. Up, tall, out. Stretch. Squeeze your hips. Keep pressing the fingers, the palm, which will resolve the break to push yourself up. Keep adjusting. Release. Slowly come back. You'll have to keep protecting your knees. That's the most protective part. Moving into uh, Virabhadrasana 3. And Virabhadrasana 3 needs a whole lot of strength in your leg as well as a good concentration power for balancing. So today we are going to start with the wall. So we are going to take support of the wall to do uh, Virabhadrasana 3. 
or Virabhadrasana 3 so that it is very comfortable to you and you can understand how to engage those areas in this posture. So, palms are on the wall, get away from the wall, drop your head down. What you have to do, bring the left leg in, your legs are apart. And now, you have to adjust a little bit, move away, come on the fingers. Right leg goes up, hold it there only, hold. Further up, up. As you go up, you focus on the right toe. You slide, push your toe out and that is the one which is giving you a lot of support. Slide it out and push the toe up. The moment you do that, it will start opening it, getting your leg up. Now, the most critical part, it's not that difficult to get your leg up. But, look at my hips. This is very, very easy to do. This is not what we want. We want the hips to be in one line. So, I will activate my left thigh, this area, to push it into the body and rotate my hips so that my hips are in one line. So, even if you go like this, absolutely fine. Now, we will just, so tuck your core in this area in. See, in. And this is the movement. Throw your body in the way. Your right toe is very active. Hold it there. Be there. And release. You will, the area which you will really feel the most will be this area. You are working predominantly on strengthening this area, not to talk about uh, uh, the stretches which are happening by default, your hamstrings for this leg, your gluteal opening. So we are going to go with the other leg. Check for the adjustment first. And this time the left leg has to go up. First go gently. Just feel the opening in your head. And then you start adjusting. This is normal. I'm working with the toe. So I'm just limiting my foot to go up. Tall. Once I'm in the posture, I'll get into alignment. So I'm sliding with high, uh, this, this, this part of my leg, pushing it up so that I'm using my core to get my hips to my knees. Cramp? Okay. So as you can see, getting a cramp in this area is very common. But this is a very temporary cramp. It will go away immediately. What you can do to release this cramp? Opposite. That's all. The moment you move in the opposite direction, because of blood flow, that will get released. You see? You, can, you may get it again and it's very common. The moment you release and go like this, that will be released. So we are going again in the posture. Just see if you open up. This movement. Check for alignment so that you have the right grip and the resistance from the wall. This movement is the most critical part of this practice. Push. Your toe has a very active role. Hold it. Core is active, pat your navel in, watch your breath. Fingers are equally pressed on the wall and release. This was simple looking, very effective and good strength building in many a part of your body. And next is our next girl Surya Namaskar. Check for your comfort and get ready for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 19, 1, 2, 3, 4,
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A quick Mukhadhati after surgery and start so that you can come back to your normal body. Soft squat position. Lean forward. Inhale from the nasal passage, exit from the mouth. By creating a cushion. We are going into some real core building and the posture which we are going to perform is Udva Prasaita Padasana. So upward mode, the legs are moving upward and it's happening completely with the core. So we are moving the legs upward in three stages. I, if you are only comfortable with the first stage, absolutely fine. The most critical part, don't allow any gap to happen at the lower back, you will end up with back pain. If you are not able to control your core, you can use uh, some towel or something to get it at the lower back so that this area is pressing down either on the floor or against something so that you can protect your lower back. So we are lying down and today I am lying down straight because we are working on the core. Lying down straight with the core itself is a workout for the core. Make sure you are comfortable if you are not, go <coughs> sideways and lie down on the floor. Whenever you are lying down on the floor, you always have to bend your knees, slide your lower back this way. <coughs> when you do so, you are working on engaging your core muscles now so tucking in waist straight. Arms are the head, so I am just move slightly away from the wall. So you can see, can look at me and Priya, her feet are close to the wall, my hands are close to the wall. You can actually manipulate as per your comfort. So I will take support of the wall so that I can push myself further back. Maybe initially Priya can take support of the wall with the feet to hold the posture. If your core is not strong, you might need that support. So, let's go. Uh, here, can you get your feet to the wall, touching the wall? Yes. So, step one, you can interlace your fingers if you want more stretch. Hold it there. And what did I do? The most important thing, I rolled my shoulder to get my uh, shoulders, this area, locked to the floor. That's an integral part which will help in lifting. So, this movement, my core is active. The first step on exhaling, getting my legs up at 30 degree and for today I will only doing it for 5 columns. <sighs> that forced exhalation lifted my legs up. At this point I am just tightening this area, otherwise you will get pain on the lower back. Hold. Take support with the hand also. Squeeze the hips. Approximately 5 count. This should be 5 count. Now tuck it further in and legs goes up at 60 degrees. So, the toe is pointed out, chin has a tendency to go up. And if you don't correct it, you will end up with neck pain. So get your chin down, hold. And if you look at this area, this gap, this is not, uh, I mean, we don't want this at all. So this is important. This is the most critical part. Push it down. And now we are moving to 90 degree. This may not be a very easy task for many of you. Take support of the wall. I mean, this is good. Bringing it up, of course, it needs flexibility in your hamstrings. 
in your glutes and calves. But apart from that, the lifting is done predominantly with corso. That's one of the reasons that it's a very uh, important um, practice. So this was the best practice which we did. Ideally, we're supposed to hold it for one minute over here. You see if you can hold it for 20 seconds, that's good enough. Remember the gap. We don't want any gap over there. Now we will come back in the same order and maintaining the gap while going down. It is even more critical than coming up. So I'm again tucking my core in. See, look at the movement of my hand to go down. This is the movement. So I'm pushing this in to bring my legs at 60 degree. Hold. You should feel and somebody can run, jump, walk because I have locked my core. I'm working, you're working on core, remember? 30 degree. At 30 degree, you'll have to squeeze your hips or you will end up with back pain. And relax for a few seconds. This time now. Almost 80 to 90 percent, the research shows people who are working on the core, they end up strengthening each and every part of the body instead of working on the core because they don't know how to engage it. So, when you're doing this practice, no neck pain, no back pain. Anything and everything you have to feel only at the core. If you're not feeling it, you're not doing it right. So stop it immediately. The next one is a simple practice. We are going to do it in a repetitive action, uh, which you've done it before. But because of repetition, you end up engaging your core and you will be able to feel uh, the core beautifully. So what we are going to do, we are going to do a point of tassan. And in point of tassan, arms are up. Again, just your lower back. Like how Priya is taking the support of the world, you can always do that and that will be a very good uh, stretch tone. So, arms up, make sure that there is no gap, this is the most critical part. Lock the back of the legs on the floor first. And as you come up, exhale. This is the moment. This. Inhale. Two. Exhale. Three, exhale. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven.
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A quick look at how the after surgery and start so that you can come back to your normal day. Soft squat position, lean forward, inhale from the nasal passage, exit from the mouth, by breathing a cushion. And this is how you would look after the last round of Surya Namaskar. We are again on the mat because the body is so beautifully warmed up. We will start, we will do few rounds, maybe uh, one posture of back bend to understand how you can actually work a lot with the back bend and the body is so beautifully warmed up. So remember in one of the sections we have done uh, Dhanurasana with the wall in which the feet were against the wall. Today we are going to do Dhanurasana with the wall, with the chest against the wall and then in the middle. So, Get ready. How do we get the chest on the wall? And if it is too much of stress, don't do that. So, what we are going to do, and maybe I will show the adjustment with Priya. So, we are starting from here. See, this movement. This is kind of a Bhujangasana. What we have to do, we have to release the, um, no, how to release the hand, how to get the palms off the wall, you have to get your pelvis on the floor. If you don't get your pelvis on the floor, you cannot get your hands off the floor. So try and come as close as possible to the wall. This this one. Hold it. And then bend your knees. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, we will not do that. We're moving in the middle. So we'll go with simple nanoras in the middle come like that. You can just try what I did. You know, just see in the process of doing it, you'll end up connecting with a lot of your muscles and you are breathing practice. So just try it for fun. Don't push too much. We are moving into the uh, hand in the middle. Lie down on the floor. Remember the lying down, you have to lend in your side. Hold it. Like this. Hold it. Bend your knees. Get hold of your ankle. The lock. Your lock. Your four fingers are out and lock with the thumb. This lock is critical. Step one, chin out. Lock your chin on the floor. Step two, get your legs off the floor. As much as possible. And first pull the arms up. Once you think this is your final pull, you start pushing the ankle at the back. It's very important that you start lifting the legs up first. If you lift your upper part of the body up first, the legs will not Go uh, to its maximum capacity. Now bend your elbows to open up your armpit. This is a very soft one. You can just hold it over here. Now if you are comfortable, start lengthening. Tall. Get your shoulder blades close to each other. Breathe. Breathing will be shallow. Be there for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Release. Relax. And we will give a uh, count of st uh, stretch immediately to the posture. Up, Shashankasana. You will release all the strength from the back. Mm -hmm. 
and in the stretch section we will close uh, the stretch section with the last stretch this is a partner stretch so what we are going to do the partner mostly because we are doing at home nowadays and with, uh, with your spouse with your kids so this make it a point of bonding with them on the mat also so what we are going to do we are going to do a partner stretch which is a very good stretch for opening up the whole of the spine as well as lower back so I am going to do a prayer on this come here so Priya is going to be in uh, Shashankasana facing back side. Like we keep doing Shashankasana this way. Anybody who has got knee pain, they will not be down on the floor. They will be up. That's very critical or it will damage your knee. So we don't want that. So Priya is in Shashankasana. What I am going to do, I will sit. This is a good release. Heavier the person at the top, the release is much better. So I'm releasing her lower back anyway. What am I going to do? I have to I will lie down. My upper part of the body will be resting on, on her upper part of the body. The moment I'm getting into lying down position, I will start sliding my hips down. So my hips will be hanging towards the floor, not on her body. And that will give an amazing stretch to her as well as a good opening to my back. So this is how I'm going sliding down. This movement. Amazing open. What I can do, I can get my legs up. So that way you get all the benefits of the pretending. Be there. Please ask your partner if he or she is okay. Mm -hmm. She will be fine because we are so used to all those things. Amazing. You can see my hips dropping down. The moment it is dropping down, it's giving a very good traction to my lower back. And that's an amazing release to your lower back. So I've got to try this to feel that relaxation and releasing your lower back. Just relax. This is how we will come back slowly. And we have already initiated into pranayam. Today we are going to add one more component. You inhale, pause, elevate your chest, retain within your capacity and then exhale. Very simple. So this is what we are doing. I'll just show and then uh, one and then we can start together for three minutes. You will inhale. Always exhale before you start anything so that you can eliminate a lot of carbon dioxide. That lifting effect which we have been talking about in Kapalvati, just learn how to elevate, hold it, hold the chest, lock your breath, retain your breath and come down. So we are going to do three minutes of this practice, this kind of part of Samavita Pranayam and we will see how we are doing it today. This is the first practice of lengthening the retention. Let's start. If you are very comfortable with this, count how many uh, numbers you are able to do, if not, just focus on retention without straining your throat muscles.
That was a good few minutes relaxation or meditation. Two points to be remembered, no straining, no involvement of throat muscles. So you will need to practice that before we really get deeper into pranayama. Today we are going to start with the Brahmari. We are working today on the Brahmari uh, breathing level, not pranayama level. Brahmari is one of the uh, important pranayama described at Yoga Pradhika. There are eight uh, important pranayama. Brahmari is one of them. Brahmari, uh, Richard, it is generally called Richard, it is your exhalation. Brahmari uh, uh, in Sanskrit is uh, B. When we do Brahmari, we create that B sound. When we are creating that B sound, the sound is coming from the nasal passage and that is equal to chanting Om. Um, we are done Om um chanting in one of our uh, uh, episodes, I think, two or three uh, episodes back. And when we do that, only the nasal passage is active and there is a whole lot of vibrations in the nasal area. This vibration helps in calming down your brain nerves. So we are it for blood pressure. For high BP, it will, it will help you calm down. Also for low BP, as it will help you get down. is also recommended for thyroid, hyper as well as hyper. Hyper, because they really need to calm down and relax. They don't need to be very active. Hyper because one of the sources of thyroid is the stress, so you can actually calm down. If you are not able to sleep at night, just do 15 to 20 hours of Brahmari and you will have a very, very you will assume any sitting posture, meditative posture as per your comfort, your spine needs to remain neutral. You will inhale. Just before exhaling, you will block your ears. This is how I'm going to block my ears. And very softly you are going to cup your eyes and exhale using the um sound from the nasal passage. So I'm going to uh, show everything in the first one. Inhale. That was one short Brahmari. When you exhale, make sure you push your stomach softly in towards the spine for the sound to come out. So we are going to do it together for more rounds of Brahmari. That was Brahmari and uh, tomorrow when we do Brahmari, we will just make slight changes to see you. Thank you so much for watching. We have already completed 12th day of our practice. Almost more than half way through and I am sure you are gaining a lot from this practice. Keep sharing your experience. See you tomorrow.